my grandfather who long passed away, I used to hang around him quite a bit and I, I learned a lot from him. He was a salt of the earth type of guy, blue collar worker, worked for the railroads. And he would often give me like riddles. Like what does a hurricane and a tornado have in common? I'm like, I don't know, high winds. And he goes, yeah, okay, now what does a hurricane and a tornado and a redneck divorce have in common? And I'm like, I don't know, Grandpa. And he said, someone is losing a trailer. And, and he was right. I thought of that today. We had Hurricane Helene come in, devastating hurricane, not so much in the coastal areas, but inward in North Carolina. Uh, Chimney Rock, what a name for a town. Chimney Rock, North Carolina. Uh, let me show you the devastation here. Yeah, it's just lumber, timber everywhere. It just looks like a nuclear bomb went off or uh, a diversity arrived or something. It's devastating. And it's sad because these areas are primarily white, conservative, Christian, Trump supporters. And they're getting absolutely no help from the federal government. No one cares because they're white, rural people like myself. And, of course, the only thing that the Biden administration they're trying to do is to try to blame it on climate change. We've never had this sort of thing before. This is due to climate change. You need to give up all your liberty and eat Z bugs and eat it and live in the pod because of climate change. Uh, well, really? It's never happened before? Uh, take a look at this. Take a look at this. This was Asheville, North Carolina. And notice something? Uh, yeah, what, what, what do you notice? Yeah, it's black and white photograph because they didn't have color back then. This wasn't last year or two years ago. This was 1916. It was over 100 years ago, and it wiped out the town of Asheville, North Carolina. But a hurricane came in and flooded it. So, <laughs> I don't know. It is somehow, uh, you would think that this shouldn't have happened 100 years ago, because in 1916, we didn't have all these cars uh, polluting and hurting the earth and warming us. Uh, we didn't have any of that. So that's kind of hard to explain. But besides blaming this on climate change, Biden has been missing, of course, because he has Alzheimer's. He doesn't know what's going on. And uh, where's Kamala? She's part of the administration. Uh, she's going around advocating for, I guess, gay race abortions or something. Uh, she, that's all she's interested in at this point. I guess Trump is going to go down there. So that's good. But this could come back and buy Kamala because natural disasters, they could be the politician's best friend or his enemy. It is true because usually a politician runs to a disaster like flies are attracted to a corpse, right? And for the same reason, they get nourishment. If you're a politician and there's a flood, what do you want to do? You want to run to the side of the flood bring all the photographers, the camera, the media, get it all set up, have them put out sandbags, uh, take, undo your tie, roll up your sleeves, and then have a picture of you holding a sandbag for the, for the media and, and just looking real serious. And then after the media goes, you can, you know, drop the sandbag off and tell everyone, hey, thank you for inviting me to your town. Uh, fuck you, I'm leaving now. That's what you do. Now, that's what you do because you get good publicity. You don't want to be missing an action. If you're missing an action, uh, you got some problems. And it's already too late for Kamala. She should have been there down there right now. Uh, but she isn't. Maybe she will eventually go, but it's too little, too late. And now for the people of North Carolina, it's, it's too bad. You know, it's not like uh, she cares about them. It's not like they're God's chosen people or something. Uh, maybe if they put up the Israeli flag, she'd be flying down there in a heartbeat. Or the Ukrainian flag, they'd be repeat, our politicians would be running down there. But the American flag, yeah, screw you. We don't care about you. So, uh, but this sort of thing can really come back and bite you. This happened with George Bush. Remember Hurricane Katrina? That was a devastating hurricane that hit New Orleans. And the levees broke. It, the town flooded. It wasn't so much the wind, but the flood. And then the usual suspects of the town... <laughs> 
there's a group of people that acted responsible responsible and helped everyone get out and tended with the the injured and rationed food and water. Uh, that was a certain demographic. Then you had another demographic was like, yeah, time to loot and rape. And then after they're looted and raped, they're like, oh, where's the food and water? And oh, uh, Bush doesn't care about black people. Remember that? That was a big thing. And that really, that torpedo, that his election, it really did. That was considered horrible. That And th there was a repeat of that that sort of happened with Trump. I did this video when COVID came out. I said, you know, Trump has to get ahead of this because the Democrats are going to jump on this COVID thing to say, oh, Trump doesn't care. He mishandled this pandemic. They killed millions. He needs to do more. And I said at the time, they're going to try to turn it into his Hurricane Katrina. Well, this could be Harris's Hurricane Katrina because she's missing and she's incompetent. She doesn't have any leadership. Whereas Trump, you may hate him, but he's a leader. You can see he's in charge. And uh, yeah, this has come at a really a bad time for the Democrats. They didn't need this. They didn't need a weak lead leader who's you know doing funky dances and talking about joy and how about today was yesterday's tomorrow. And you know, the, the, America doesn't need that. They need a real leader. And this is showing the leadership deficit we have right now. And it's not a good time, not a good time for the Democrats, how they've bungled this hurricane. Talk to you guys later.